Thank you for the previous papers. I will try to be as brief as possible, and that will mean that I'll skip over some of the slides, if you excuse me, because I've probably got too many anyway, and lunch beckons. Um, as we have heard repeatedly, and no doubt we'll hear again, in 1979, Persepolis was entered into the list of World Heritage Sites, being described as an, imperial, an impressive palace complex, and I think that probably is a very good description of the site. In the justification, it was designated as the, the example par excellence of the dynastic city, the symbol of the Achaemenid dynasty. This is but one of many different opinions about the significance of Persepolis. In 2005, Ali Musavi, who gave a talk to the Iran Heritage Fund uh, last autumn, published an article entitled Why Darius Built Persepolis. And after listing various uh, possible um, views, he concluded that it was not necessarily uh, it was not necessary to look for esoteric interpretations and suggested that Persephone symbolized the power and stability of the king. Um, no doubt this is a reasonable and certainly a partly correct interpretation, but it's perhaps not the whole story. In fact, there are probably almost as many opinions about the function of Persepolis as there are scholars who have investigated this question. I will just look briefly at five aspects of Persepolis, skate over the surface, there's much more that could be said, but I just want to stress a few points before going on to considering how Persepolis was viewed uh, after its destruction, and then a final slide about Persepolis in the present. Um, first, Persepolis as a palace. And there's little doubt that Persepolis was built to serve as a palace, an imperial palace. And palaces in antiquity had many functions, and many of these functions were, uh, many of the activities associated with these functions took place in particular spaces. And Inga Nielsen, in her book on Hellenistic palaces, listed some of the uh, functions, palatial functions, and suggested how they could be seen in the architectural remains of the palaces. And this is a very sensible list. There are some aspects that probably don't apply to uh, Persepolis, the public, the gymnasium, the library, and the theater and hippodrome probably don't uh, play an important, a very important role at Persepolis, but otherwise one can see there are a large number of different functions which uh, we expect took place at Persepolis. But in fact, um, it's very difficult to identify where exactly in Persepolis, either on the terrace or in the uh, plain below, where these functions are taken. One could have a good stab that the gatehouse was a gatehouse. Uh, the throne room was probably, or a throne room was in, in the Apodana building, but probably there were audience chambers in almost every building, and the treasury building um, could well have served as a treasury. We know that documents relating to the activities of the treasurer took place there. But the other buildings, by and large, we have very little idea. For example, the residential suites occupied by the king and his family, we can't identify with confidence. Bathrooms, kitchens are missing, and uh, it's still very much um, uncertain how these buildings were used. Nevertheless, there are indications that the king sat in audience uh, and received the gifts and tribute of uh, the empire at Persepolis and that the regional administration and in all probability part of the imperial government was also carried out here. Uh, no doubt when the king was in residence, uh, Persepolis served as the center for his government. As in medieval Europe, the seat of government moved with the king, and whether Persepolis was a seasonal capital or whether there was a regular migration of the court is not clear. Uh, perhaps Walter Henkelmann can tell us more from the Persepolis fortification text, but they are written in a period when Persepolis was still a building site, so it would not perhaps be typical for later in the empire. But certainly 
courts uh, moved, as in the Parthian period or the Ilkhanid period, you had summer and winter capitals, and it seems quite reasonable that the Achaemenids should have had a similar uh, system. Persepolis has been compared and contrasted with the more modest center of Pasargadi built under Cyrus uh, about 25 early, years earlier than Persepolis and inscribed in the list of World Heritage Sites some 25 years after Persepolis in 2004. Scholars have noted the similarities in the architecture with the stone platforms and columned buildings, and particularly the enigmatic towers of uh, Zendani Suleiman and Kaba Zardusht, and the fact that royal tombs were erected in both places. And so they've suggested that uh, it was perhaps Darius's aim to draw attention to the importance of his branch of the Achaemenid family. Uh, and to give legitimacy to his uh, taking power in Iran. Um, even if the aim was not to draw attention to the different branches of the Achaemenid uh, clans, uh, uh, the surviving remains at Persepolis stand, as Lord Curzon eloquently uh, proposed as a monument commemorating the king and his deeds, as do the uh, royal inscriptions displayed on the buildings. The challenge, to, challenge of interpreting the images depicted at Persepolis has led to numerous different interpretations involving symbols and astrology. Some of these suggestions are sensible, others less so. Um, certainly, the, the images had some symbolic value. What exactly it was uh, is often very difficult to tell. I remember at Persepolis when I was studying there, the guides would come round and they'd, uh, 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 they'd be asked what this was, and the guides always had an answer for what the symbolism was. Uh, and it, if the tourist was unsatisfied with a particular explanation, they would come up with another explanation which was more satisfying. I feel that's rather like that with uh, modern studies of the symbolism of Persepolis. An aspect that has been uh, relatively ignored is the importance of religion and rituals in Persepolis. Religion was a very important part of ancient Iranian, ancient Near Eastern kingship, and we have uh, considerable evidence that rituals were carried out on the, in the region of Persepolis, both with uh, the Homer ceremony and um, it's like, oh, sorry, uh, scenes that show live animals and other offerings being, uh, it's likely these scenes show uh, live animals and other offerings being brought for some ceremony, some religious ceremony, uh, rather than uh, for, that they were used for sacrifice and libations rather than provisions for a banquet, as is the traditional interpretation. And this point would probably have been made very forcibly by uh, Sharukh Razumju, who should have, was originally going to talk uh, instead of, uh, and I replaced him here. Um, in 1979, in the same year that Persepolis was inscribed in the list of World Heritage Sites, Margaret Root published a very influential book entitled King and Kingship in Achaemenid Art. And she proposed that Darius had a well thought out programmatic intention to portray his kingship as a consistently idealized vision which stressed images of piety, control, and harmonious order. She acknowledged that this was a, an aspiration, not a reality, but st stressed that the conception of this vision where the king and his subjects were in a mutually supportive symbiotic relationship with something original and exceptional. And Root's views have been widely accepted and nowadays are orthodox, though myself I am somewhat skeptical. Uh, for example, uh, Root suggests that the scene on the tombs shows the personifications of uh, the lands of the empire solemnly lifting up the king in praise, 
whereas Darius in his inscription uh, said that these figures are there to show you how great the Persian Empire is and how the Persian man has delivered battle far indeed from Persia, not entirely a Pacific uh, message. Some have seen the fusion of Egyptian and Persian features on the, st on the statue of Darius found at Susa as an indication that Darius wanted to appease his uh, Egyptian subjects, that he was appealing to their uh, background. But when you look at the statue, the first impression is very much that uh, the king is Persian. He wears Persian dress rather than Egyptian dress, unlike all other previous rulers of native and foreign rulers of Egypt, he's shown as a foreigner, and the inscription on the cuneiform inscriptions uh, says that it's there to show that the Persians, Persian man holds Egypt. Similarly, the apparently peaceful scenes at Persepolis of tribute for the subject peoples are described uh, by Darius as being um, depictions, the subject peoples are uh, the countries in his possession who felt fear of him and therefore brought him tribute. Um, thus, on the one hand, there was a possibility of rewards for those who followed the king, king's commands, but on the other hand, the threat of retribution was ever present, and the presence of the Persian military, the soldiers, are everywhere at Persepolis, and the vast number of figures carved at Persepolis are those of soldiers, outnumbering many times those other people. The function of Persepolis was uh, perhaps stated on an inscription, the south wall of the terrace was built at the request of Ahura Mazda and the other gods, exactly as Darius had wanted it to be built. And in this, he follows the earlier tradition of building palaces such as that built by the Assyrian king Sargon. And despite the very obvious architectural differences between Persepolis with its columns and the Mesopotamian palaces, their acti the activities that took place in them were probably very similar. And this is illustrated by the audience scene, which was uh, widely distributed in seals in Duskilian in northwestern Turkey in the uh, Alexander sarcophagus in Sidon, as we've seen. This scene, uh, which seems to be an iconic Persian scene, is based on an earlier Assyrian uh, motif where the figures are in exactly the same, almost exactly the same poses, only their clothes have been changed. I would conclude, therefore, that Persepolis was primarily built to serve as an imperial palace complex commemorating the king and his deeds. This does not mean, however, that other factors such as symbolism, seasonality, ritual did not play an important part in its design. After Alexander had destroyed Persepolis, the ruins remained visible and impressive over the following millennia. And visitors to Persepolis left graffiti which inform us about their understanding of the site. Um, as is shown in a Sasanian inscription on Darius's palace, at this time, uh, in the fourth century AD, even the original name of the site had been forgotten. It was called Satstun, 100 columns, and the name of its builder was also unknown. After the Islamic conquest, the site was visited by various rulers of Iran who left more than, well, several dozen inscriptions, the earliest on the top there by uh, Buyid kings in the 10th century AD who in their propaganda emphasized their links with previous dynasties of Iran. And the latest on the lower row are two inscriptions from the time of the Qajar king Nasruddin Shah which record the excavations carried out in March and April 1877 and are perhaps the earliest excavation reports on Persepolis. A particularly informative visit was that of Sultan Khalil, uh, <coughs> the uh, son of Shah Rukh, the, uh, which was 
not only commemorated by inscriptions carved in Darius's palace, but was also recorded by Davani in his uh, Adname. And it begins, when the august parasol, which is a lovely way of describing the uh, sultan, when the august parasol reached the Stachar of Fars, he spent one day at that place of astonishing vestiges, vestiges admiring the wonderful images. And he calls it a thousand columns, and he associates with Jamshid, who is, uh, according to historians, is uh, Solomon. And this is a tradition that continues, uh, continued until the uh, cuneiform inscriptions were deciphered, that because Jamshid and Solomon were noted as building monuments that couldn't be built by humans alone, that Persepolis was thought in a way to have been built uh, by supernatural beings. And he also mentions that uh, Jamshid ordered his subjects to gather at the foot of the mountain on New Year's Day. The inscription goes on. It's a wonderful uh, text which, which talks about the gloriousness of Sultan Khalil being there and the figures on the, the, the carved figures vanish into the stone being uh, eclipsed by the magnificence of Sultan Khalil. Um, but then, <coughs> yes, the figures on the rock stood bewildered, perhaps even vanished from their places, and the images overcome in the presence of such company entered the walls and perhaps disappeared from them altogether. No, no, on the contrary, the images must have recovered a new life from the advent of the king. Many of the um, inscriptions <coughs> uh, record the remarkable nature of the site and reflect on the temporary nature of mortal rule. But it's clear that the visitors also gained prestige from the carving of their inscriptions. And in 1422, Ibrahim Sultan, son of Shahrukh, proclaimed his rule at Persepolis. Ibrahim Sultan was a grandson of Tamburlaine, who, according to Christopher Marlowe, exclaimed, is it not passing brave to be a king and ride in triumph through Persepolis? And this sentiment of associating with Persepolis has been followed even into modern times with the <coughs> Persepolis chosen as the primary site for Muhammad Reza Shah's celebration of Persian monarchy and also with visits of more recent rulers. Finally, I want to raise the question of what Persepolis might mean today. For me, Persepolis is an archaeological site, and the evidence that it contains about the past, not only from the accumulated period, but also about its history after the accumulated period, is important. And this evidence should be, it should be able to investigate it, but at the same time it should be preserved and conserved so that future scholars with more advanced methods will be able to make new discoveries. Uh, arch archaeological excavation is always destruction, so we should not investigate it too hard. But at the same time, for most people, Persepolis is a tourist destination, a source of wonder and of speculation about the past of Iran and our place in history. The numbers of visitors and the measures taken to manage them can be a threat to the integrity of the site, and it's a, a problem that those responsible for looking after Persepolis have taken very seriously. At the same time, Persepolis is a symbol of the fortune of Iran with its past glories heralding a prosperous future. And this is clearly a very important aspect for those uh, politicians in Iran who will ultimately have to make decisions. And these aspects and other aspects are included in Persepolis as a World Heritage Site, as we've already just heard. And this is perhaps the uh, challenge that remains. The future of Persepolis will depend on a judicious balancing of the competing demands of these different views of Persepolis. Thank you for your attention.